Welcome to worship at St. John's United Church of Christ. We are so glad you're here. This week at St. John's, we are celebrating All Saints Day with our Totem Fest ceremony and communion. So as we gather our hearts and minds for worship, I'm encouraging you to go and gather a element of food and something to drink that we might bless during communion time later in the service. If you would like to see the names that will be read tonight, today, or if you'd like to follow along in our worship, or give a donation to the church online, I encourage you to go to our website, stjohns401.org. There will also be a time during our Totem Fest ceremony where if you choose to type a name of a loved one who has passed away within the past 12 months, you are welcome to put that into the comments and we will read it live. Let us gather our hearts and souls for worship as we join together in our choral introit, Blessed Are They. Whenever we gather into worship, we realize that we bring with us burdens that have been put on us and that we have chosen to carry. As we gather and as we focus on God, let us recognize those burdens and lay them at God's feet. Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, May we give up to you today all the worries and anxieties that fill our hearts and minds. May you clear us so that we might fully focus on you and our celebration and worship of your glory. Gracious God, we bring sorrows and pain. Whenever healing is possible, dear God, may it be so. And whenever there is acceptance needed, dear God, give us strength. Gracious and glorious Lord, we also recognize our joys and celebrations, and we lift them up to you with the greatest of gratitude. We recognize your goodness and blessing in this world and ask that you use these gifts to encourage us to go forth and be loving and generous likewise. Good and gracious God, for every prayer we speak and leave unspoken, may we lift them up to you today. 
as your Son teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Join me now in our hymn, There is a Wideness in God's Mercy. Let us take time now to remind ourselves why we come as one body to worship God. As we speak together our faith statement found in a new creed. We are not alone. We, we live, live in, in God's, God's world. We, we believe, believe in God, God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, Jesus the Word made flesh to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim just and crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life and death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. song of the saints of God.
invite you to turn in your Bibles to our scripture today, which is the book of Psalms, Psalm 107, verses 1 through 7, and then picking up again in verses 3, 33 through 37. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed from trouble, and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in the desert ways, finding no way to an inhabited town. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way until they reached an inhabited town. He turns rivers into a desert. Springs of water into thirsty ground, a fruitful land into a salty waste because of the wickedness of its inhabitants. He turns a desert into pools of water, a parched land into springs of water, and there he lets the hungry live. And they establish a town to live in. They sow fields and plant vineyards and get a fruitful yield. By his blessing, they multiply greatly. The Lord bless the reading and hearing of this scripture and use it in the building of our faith. Amen. Today we recognize a long-standing tradition in St. John's and in many German ancestry churches called Totenfest, which comes to us as a way to recognize those who passed away in the last 12 months or more. Totenfest came out of a war where the people suffered incredible losses and they needed one day to recognize the sorrow, but also give thanksgiving to God for the great gift of eternal life. As we take time every year to recognize our celebration of Totenfest, we have mixed feelings and emotions. It is a day that reaches back through a history of long-held traditions and memories, not only in our own lives, but in the history of our church and many others. It is also a day when we remember the heartache that we carry and that will probably follow us into our holiday season. Sometimes, I must admit, I get frustrated with the Christian anxiety about death. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. We believe in everlasting, eternal life. We believe that God is a God of steadfast love and presence. And yet, there is an incredible fear of death. And loss is taken to be so personally at times. Christ reminds us that a perfect love casts out fear and that death has no victory anymore. But it is good to recognize those who have passed away and to recognize on All Saints Day the frailty of our own existence. It is not something to meet with sorrow and pain, but something to recognize as a blessing the fact that we live this life 
and have all of these vast experiences and are having these memories to look back on now of loved ones who we miss. We recognize the blessing of God's love and steadfastness even in difficult times. You know, all of our favorite celebrations came in difficult times. If you think of all of the different celebrations that we hold as a church or as a culture, we hold them because they were a moment of difficulty where we chose that we could either focus on the pain or we could find a celebration. Thanksgiving and harvest festivals are at the end of harvest when you're heading into difficult seasons. And yet what you do is you gather a harvest in and you recognize the bounty that you have and then portion of it. Easter comes because we walked through Holy Saturday and Good Friday. Christmas comes not from a kingdom or a palace, but be from a barn. It comes out of two young homeless children who are finding a way to make a family in a difficult situation. This year, we recognize that the losses have been greater. The inability to have funerals and memorials the way we wish for our loved ones has been a pain that cuts deeply for many. But as we struggle to meet up with people and to spend time with individuals, we also recognize what a blessing it was to have individuals in our lives. How important every relationship and every human connection is. And we celebrate with wholeheartedness the connection we have with God who continues to remind us that no matter what, we will never be alone or forgotten. We celebrate God's steadfast presence through all and in all. Because God is with us. God is great and wondrous and capable of all things and also walks with us in difficult times. When we are feeling hungry and thirsty, God will guide us. When we're feeling lost in a wilderness, God is with us. And God is worthy of this praise. Today we take time to remember loved ones past and celebrate that for them all sickness and sorrow are ended and death itself has passed away. So there is nothing left for them but joy and the love and presence of God. May we give thanks to God for this grace and for this reassurance. And may we go forth into our lives recognizing that this love will carry through, through all sorrows and aches, through all joys and celebrations. God is surely with us. Let us praise the Lord. We remember those who have died. We celebrate their lives, even as we continue to grieve. Alice Adamson. Helen Barnhart. Chevette Sanders Brown.
Jonathan Crawford. Patricia Patsy Davis. Stephen Davis. Ruth Dovin Yule. Melvin Fox. Caleb Geiger. Darren Haney. Violet Harold. Tom Hirschlag. Thelma Tiny King. Bill Lacombe. John Laprome. Gary Lowry. Dale Mars. Wayne Schuster. Margaret Schwebke. John Sharp. Beverly Subi Moss Smith. Marge Thompson. The victims of COVID-19. Reverend Ronald Woodruff, Donna Hecht, Wilhelm Strohmeyer, Peg Lang, We remember all those who have gone before us. This is the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Today we recognize loss and sorrow, but God will not leave us abandoned. Because just as Jesus walked towards the cross, Jesus stopped to give all of his followers the encouragement and the reminders they needed to give them strength for the journey ahead. So we take time today to celebrate Holy Communion as we recognize the good and perfect gift of God. On the night of betrayal and desertion, as Jesus gathered in the upper room with his followers to celebrate the Passover feast, gathered them in, took the bread, and broke 
Dear God, we give thanks for inviting us to this table. The table with no ends that includes all. We give thanks for your love that is placed before us and that we take in today. May this service of communion encourage us and strengthen us for the journeys ahead. May we be revived and renewed so that we might go into your world and share the good news with others. For your great blessings, those which have been given and those yet to come, we give you thanks. In your name. As we celebrate many gifts that are given at St. John's United Church of Christ, we understand that there are many ways of giving. For all the gifts of time, treasure, and talent that have been given to help maintain and support the church, the building, the staff, and our ministries, we give thanks. We give thanks for all those who have helped with the community garden, who've helped with maintenance, who've helped to support and encourage the staff in these strange and unknown days. We give thanks for those who continue to encourage and support missions, even when their lives are getting tighter. We give thanks for generosity. That which has been given to us by God and for all those who continue to recognize their blessings and pass them forward. This month for November, we will be celebrating and recognizing our offering for neighbors in need, which is one of the special United Church of Christ offerings. And St. John's is a proud church for our five for five status, which means that we encourage giving to all five special offerings in the United Church of Christ. Neighbors in Need is one of them, and it specifically helps with mission projects around our community and our nation. Let us recognize our ability to give so generously in so many ways as we take time to bring forth our gifts. thanks for the many blessings that we recognize in our own lives. May you take these offerings that we give of time, treasure, and talent and bless them so that they might encourage your work in this world. These offerings may be small symbols of our gratitude, dear God, but with your presence and steadfastness, we know that even the smallest offering can grow to move mountains. Gracious and loving God, bless all those gifts and all those who give today. May they encourage us to go forth, continuing your good news and your gospel, and bringing hope to all the world. In your name we pray. Amen. Join me now in our final hymn, For All the Saints. We'll sing verses 1, 2, 4, and 5.
gracious unto you now and forever. Amen.